Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of Social Studies. This one is going to be short, I promise you, because I ran into some technical difficulties last night. And um, this morning I'm doing this during advisory and we're going to have students coming in any minute now. So I'm going to be making this a short, quick one, um, but it will be valuable, hopefully helpful, enjoyable, educational, etc. The first industrial revolution, this is, I believe this is 5B4 or 3, I don't remember, but that doesn't really matter. We're talking about the notes that say the first industrial revolution, which are your notes 5B2. Um, and I will put them in cami. Now, this was all part of life during the early to mid 1800s, aka the first half of the 19th century, which is approximately 1800 to 1850. Everything in this unit is going to be going on during this time period for the most part. During this time, the U.S. population and wealth were increasing very rapidly. The population was skyrocketing. We are becoming a wealthy country. We're on our way to becoming one, at least. However, the enslaved population is also increasing rapidly during the early to mid-1800s, as we will talk about soon. Um, and also, many people are finally are starting to think of themselves most as Americans. They are losing that loyalty to their old states. Um, we already talked about the War of 1812. Here is the bell you can hear in the background. It is almost time for children to start arriving, so I'm going to try to wrap this up quickly. Um, industrialization and new technologies. This is the part we're going to be focusing on today, the first industrial revolution. It's going to bring about more efficient farming. Farming, industrialization might not seem like they go together, but they do. Just stay tuned. Better transportation and communication as well. Um, next, after this, we will go into the expansion of the country in size, something known as manifest destiny, and then the political changes we'll get into after that. What are those arrows there for, you ask? Well, we're talking about a revolution. And revolution, we've talked about the American Revolution, which was a political revolution, the overthrow of a government, et cetera, or the French Revolution, or the Cuban or Russian Revolution, or Chinese Revolution. This is more in the terms of like the Neolithic Revolution, to kick it old school for you. Um, a dramatic and wide-reaching change in the way something works or is organized the marketing one underwent a revolution. It's dramatic change, radical change, drastic or radical alteration. So um, the way that things are produced is going to go a, undergo a radical change during the early to mid 1800s. Actually throughout the 1800s, a lot of times the entire 1800s is known as the industrial revolution, but we break it up into two. We say the first industrial industrial revolution which takes place in the early to mid 1800s, that is before the Civil War. And then in eighth grade, you pick up the second industrial revolution, which is at the end of the 1800s, beginning of the 1900s. All right, so this is the sheet we are on, and we are going to fill in this section right here. So if you don't have it with you, I will put it in Cami, but we're gonna go through and just fill in this so that we, when you return to school, we can talk about the first industrial revolution. So industrialization is kind of a synonym for the industrial revolution. This is just the process of changing. So the shift from farming or agriculture to factories, farming to factories has a nice ring to it. Basically from agriculture to manufacturing, our economy shifts from when everyone was a farmer to more and more people are working in factories. So industrialization. Also during this time period where it says blank, factory, blank powered factories, oh, wrong way, water slash steam powered factories, first water, then steam, but water slash steam powered factories, parentheses, these are called mills often, begin to replace human and animal powered tools, okay? So all of that goes in that first industrialization thing. Capitalism. This is kind of the economic system, the way the United States is organized. Um, we'll talk about this later. We'll talk about this later. Capitalism is an economic system, like what we have in the U.S., where private individuals, remember joint stock companies, people buying things, remember how we talk about banks today are owned by private inv individuals or corporations. So we have an economic system where most things are owned by private individuals, not the government. Um, 
so private individuals, not the government, own businesses and compete to try to make a profit, just like that joint stock company back in 1607 when Jamestown was in heaven, they were trying to make a profit. Um, another name for that is a market economy or free market system or free enterprise system. Any of those, uh, we won't necessarily use them that much this unit, but they're words you should be familiar with living in the United States, capitalism. All right, next up, um, we have a bunch of blanks here, textiles, factory system, productivity, and surplus. We're going to go through each of these. Um, textiles just means cloth, 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 cloth or fabric, another way. Textiles, These. this was really the first product to in the United States to be really affected by industrialization is gonna be the textile industry. Textile industry, textile industry. It is not about texting, it is not about tiles, it is all about cloth. The factory system, this is before this, people used to make things start to finish by hand. This is when people start to use machines, interchangeable parts and mass production. And we'll talk about these more to produce many identical goods. Uh, old school example here, making secret snowmen. You might not even remember them from sixth grade, but around Christmas time, you may have received a secret snowman with a little nice message and a candy cane on them. And seventh grade, our advisor used to make those. We were unable to this year, but maybe they'll return in the past. We'll talk about that. You can ask me about secret snowmen and I'll explain it in school. Productivity. I'm trying to be very productive right near and right now. Productivity means how much a person pr can produce. If you are very productive or highly productive, you can produce a lot in a short amount of time. If you are not very productive, it means that you might not be getting much done. And finally, surplus. Surplus just means extra. Hopefully you have enough room to write it on that line. There is a little bit of surplus line there for you. But it basically, the reason we're saying this is because during the early to mid 1800s, farmers are going to become more productive. They can produce more. That is going to allow them to produce a surplus of food, which they can then sell, which means that not everybody has to be a farmer anymore, which means that some people can go to work in factories, for example. All right. That is all we're going to do for today. So please make sure you get those notes filled in, just a little section of notes and a few questions for you to answer. They'll be easy if you watch the video. I think the secret example I'm going to use is Secret Snowman. If Secret Snowman might be a hint for an answer to a question, perhaps an example of mass production or using the factory system. All right, and kids are lining up at my door. I have to go. Have a good day.